Ring of Bright Water. Ring of Bright Water, Chapter 5, St. Agatha's Eve. Richardson, Richardson, do you know what today is? Good grief, mate, you didn't half give me a fright. Why, sometimes I half regret getting Professor Zebulon to build a mechanical voice module for you. And the reason for my fright and alarm? I indeed know the order of the day. It's St. Agatha's Eve. St. Agatha's Eve? What's that, shiny shoes? The most magical day of the year, young orphan my lad. It's the night when ordinary folk like you and I and others like Midge camp out in the porch of the nearest church from 11pm until 1am, weather permitting. Why would we do a thing like that, mister? Because if, like us, you do it three years on the trot, ghostly apparitions of those to die in the coming year will appear before your very eyes. Your very, very eyes? Unfortunately, Angus sat on my spectacles. I didn't know that otters wore a spectacles. That's right, viewers. The character of Midge is an otter. We're just, just getting that clear in your minds. So, Midge, can't you just get a new pair of spectacles before 11pm tonight? I'm out of pocket after bailing out a duchess following the periwig inquiry in Chapter 3, and since I'm not native to the European Economic Community, I'm not eligible for glasses on the national health. Oh, that's scandalous, Midge. But couldn't you see the ghosts through your prescription sunglasses? At night? Don't be stupid, Richardson. No, I'm serious. The darkness of night and the polarising effect of your shades are based in medical science, but ghosts aren't based in science at all because they don't exist, so you'd be able to see them perfectly clearly. By that reasoning, I won't need any glasses at all. Well, it's quarter to eleven, so we'd better get going. In the church's porch, ten minutes later. Well, Midge, it's been good of you to come to the St. Agatha's Vigil on the last two occasions, so I hope it'll all pay off tonight when we'll be tipped off about all those about to perish and forearmed with that knowledge, ingratiate ourselves into their wills. I can't see a thing. Splendid. The spectres will be all the clearer. The clock chimeth. Who? Who's that? It looks like... A ghost! A ghost! It's the spectre of Mrs. Potts and Pans, the Burgermeister's wife. And she looks as if she's been savaged by a shark. Gosh, I wonder how she'll die. And here comes another one. Are you seeing them clearly, Midge? No, they're a bit wobbly around the edges. Ah, well, that one was Herr Bollinger of the Ivory Toes, and he had a cactus through his stomach, so I'm going to sensibly infer that his regular Vegas trip will turn out to be most irregular. What care I, an otter of otters, for the plight of mortal man? Oh, Midge, you rodential supremacist. Oh, here's another one. A bit smaller than the rest. It's... No. Oh, no. An otter. Let me see. It could be. It could be. I guess. But my eyes. It's not as tall as me. That's because this ghost has been decapitated and also its head's cut off. A eh, viewers? Oh, for credible eyesight. Tell me, Richardson, in all mercy, is it the ghost of me? Of me? Without a head, I just don't know. But you've known me so long. I'm really sorry, Midge, but I just can't tell otters apart. But do we know if there are any other otters in this diocese, even in the rest of Scotland, which is where this is set? If Angus hadn't broken my spectacles, I would recognise my own self. Quickly, back to the ranch. I have a plan. And so, with all full speed, they returned home. If I write to the Pope, we can ask for a second St. Agatha's Eve to be consecrated later in the week, and then, with some new glasses, we can watch it again and learn which otter is to perish. How do you start a letter to the Pope? I think it's like a letter to the Times. Dear Sir, how do you do? Do you think he'll read it? It's our only chance, Midge. Our only chance. Well, there it is. We'll put it in the first post. The following day. Richardson, Richardson, I don't know how, but we've slept in. And the nearest post box is five miles away, and the postman will be collecting the post in just a few minutes. We have to really hurry, Midge. Can you carry me? I'm sorry, Midge. I have to carry all these strings of onions to ward off vampires, so you'll have to run along the ground and keep the letter in your mouth. You're trying to silence me. I don't have any pockets, Midge. I only wish I had. And so, at full pace, they set out across the Highland Glen. What's Angus doing to the post box, I ask you? (laughs) Ah, yes, he needs to rotate it to avoid wind damage from the mistral. Hi, Angus. Has the postman been? Oh, nay, laddie, no. You run around and post your letter, Midge, and I'll talk some compensation out of Angus for your spectacles. It's back-breaking work rotating a post box at high tide, but I'd have noticed a postman... I say, Angus, it must take an impressive and a wealthy pair of Scottish arms to dig a post box out of Ben Nevis's dirty granite. Well, it's about how you handle your spade. You've got to dig dune suddenly like this. No! 
Angus, what have you done? Your spade, it's decapitated, Midge. Oh, no, laddie, it's just mud. Midge, it's too late, the tidings were right. He might have announced himself. Oh, there's the trouble, a letter in his little mouth. I'll just pop it in the post box and off I go. I'll take the high road and you take the lower road and I'll get to Scotland, but I'm already in Scotland as established earlier in the narrative. Midge, this is truly the end of an otter. Next Tuesday at the funeral. Hello there, Reverend. It was a beautiful service and all that. Say, you're not the usual vicar. That's because I am the Pope. Dear sir, I had no idea. Ah, well, better late than never. Is it true that you're empowered under European directives to bring otters back to life? Certainly, so long as the otter was an EU national. Alas, Midge was waiting on the documentation. Besides, you've just cremated him. Mm, True, true. Would you mind me terribly asking why you talk like that? I don't get enough sleep. Now, about the other matter, Richardson, as to whether I can consecrate another St. Agatha's Eve. Yes? It cannot be done. It wouldn't be fair to St. Margaret. She would want two Eves, too, at which point the Queen of England would want two official birthdays and two real ones, and then we're into the realms of scientifically irrational numbers. Oh. However, you forget one very important thing. We can have the same St. Agatha's Eve all over again, because as Pope, I carry every day of the past year around with me inside my magic hat. Actually, I didn't know that. I'm Church of England, you see. Allow me to demonstrate, Richardson. Oh, hoopla! Here is 11.05 on St. Agatha's Eve. You made it dark outside, just like that. The effects are only local. It's still quite impressive. Well, thank you. Any time, dear sir. And look, here are the ghosts. Oh, no! Oh, no! You see what I see, Richard Son? It's... it's your ghost! And mine, looking like we've been crashed into by a 1934 Aeroflot Tupolev Ant-20 Maxim Gorky, the greatest of all Soviet propaganda aircraft. Will Richardson and Pope George Ringo II survive the year? Tune in next time to Ring of Bright Water.